Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith. Not long ago we took a look at Nikon Z50 and I really really enjoyed that camera. If you guys haven't seen that video, definitely take a look at it. I'll put a little link to it in the cards and in the description of this video. I really enjoyed that camera uh, for vlogging um, and I thought that it was something that Nikon really really did a good job in designing. Um, it has a lot of features. But before I knew it, Nikon came out with this new camera called the ZFC. And I looked at the spec sheet, and frankly, guys, I kind of discounted this camera at first. Um, I saw that it had the same 20 megapixel sensor as the Z15. Um, it also had the same video specs, you know, 4K at up to 30 frames per second. Um, and I just noticed that it had, you know, this retro design. But frankly, I thought this camera was nothing more than a Z50 playing dress up in retro themed clothes. However guys, I must say I could not have been more wrong. There are actually many things that this camera brings to the table that we didn't see on the Z50. And before we jump into this, I'll go ahead and tell you guys, I really think that Nikon, uh, to kind of answer my somewhat clickbait uh, question in my title, um, yes, I do think that this camera is retro done right. I really do like this camera quite a bit. There are some weird things, I think. I think that it's kind of weird the way that some of Nikon's marketing uh, was around this camera, but I still think this is a very great camera. And there are some things that, as I mentioned, did change with the introduction of this camera uh, compared to the Z50. What are those things that change, you may ask? Well, stick around, and we'll look at this camera in more detail. Taking a closer look at the Nikon ZFC, you'll notice one big difference uh, compared to the Z50, other than the retro design, which we'll get to in a moment, and that is this. This camera actually has a flip-out LCD screen. So if you guys remember, I spoke, to, spoke about uh, the downsides of using that flip-down screen for vlogging on the Z50. However, if you're a vlogger, the flip-out style screen on this camera will no doubt be welcome. So pretty cool there. Again, it is it is kind of strange that you see this on Nikon's uh, retro retro thing camera, uh, but uh, I am glad to see Nikon with a flip out screen at this level or any level. This camera comes with the 16 to 50 lens, um, or you can get it with a 28 millimeter prime. Interestingly enough, the 28 millimeter is actually a full frame lens, so it'll actually translate to other Nikon bodies. This one is the same DX flavor that is on Nikon Z50, but you can see how it's matching the camera here. This design is really, really nice. I do like the dials. Uh, I do like that it looks very, very retro. Um, it looks like a lot of the older Nikon film bodies. You can see that we have even our aperture here, uh, which is very similar on some of the older designs, which is nice. It's definitely got a Nikon FM feel to it. We do have all of our dials here. Over on this side, we can actually put the camera into different modes. We have manual, aperture, shutter, and program. Right now we're in manual. So as I go in here, I can actually press this button and I can actually go in and begin changing all of my shutter speeds. So as I go through all my shutter speeds here, you can see we change in full stops. If you would rather change shutter speed in third stop increments, you can go over to where it says one third step. And once you do that, you can use your rear dial to change between shutter speed, just like you would on any Nikon mirrorless or DSLR camera. We have the aperture up here at the front. So you can see my f-stop change there, so pretty nice. These dials really do have a nice feel. Uh, they are metal. You know, we have our uh, exposure comp over on this side. We also have our ISO over here. So we can change that. Very, very nice there as well. 
Um, I do kind of think about the Fuji X-T3 uh, and, and uh, X-T4. I do wish that on some of these dials we could lock and unlock them. Uh, you do always have to press this to change the setting. It'd be nice if we had that sort of press on and press off type of design. But I guess this design reflects the uh, vintage cameras a lot more. These dials are metal, so that's a very, very nice touch. Now, <clears throat> it doesn't really show on camera very much, um, but I must say, uh, if I had to be super, super picky about the design, I would say that these metal dials do kind of stand in stark contrast with the body, which the top of this body is very obviously plastic whenever you look at these uh, and kind of compare, so it doesn't look exactly the same. Really, really minor critique. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to critique that too hard. This is a fairly inexpensive camera. This is not like, you know, a $2,000 or $3,000 body. So, I mean, I get it. But, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a thing I noticed. Something else I noticed about this camera is that it does have some other settings that are different from Nikon's other mirrorless cameras. The biggest difference that I noticed on this camera, uh, especially compared to the Z50, starts with our focus area modes. So if we go into the focus area modes like this, you'll notice that we have all of our options here. Uh, we have single dynamic and wide and so forth. So all that looks normal. Where the difference comes in is on the Z50. The Z50, it has like the older setup uh, that the Z6 and Z7 have, where if you wanna do face and eye detection, you just put the camera on the wide area mode, and then you have to go into the custom functions and make sure that the uh, animal eye detection or human eye detection is turned on. On the newer Nikon bodies, like the Z62 and Z72, those have a much more intuitive setup where you can actually choose whether or not you're using uh, the auto area just as you normally would, or you can have the human or animal eye detection enabled. And instead of having to go into the custom menus to do this, you basically can do it right here within the area modes. So you can see, that we can do standard auto area, we can do auto area with people, or we can do auto area with animals. So <clears throat> very, very nice setup. You can also, just like the Z62 and Z72, go in and use the animal eye autofocus or people eye autofocus whenever you're in the wide area, AF area. So you don't have to go in and do it in the auto area. So that's something that's nice to see. Um, I hope Nikon did, gives the Z50 a firmware update to allow it to do this as well. So that was something that was interesting. A few other things I noticed. Whenever you go into the photo shooting menu, you'll notice that all the way down here at the bottom, there is an option. And yeah, I totally went camera nerd and I went through every menu option on the Z50 and on this camera to see if I could spot differences. Um, and yeah, whenever you go into here, you do have this focus shift shooting. So you can do like, uh, you can go in and, and basically do some automated type of uh, focus stacking. Now, it doesn't really stack the photos in camera for you. However, uh, it will take a series of images that you can go and um, actually put into software yourself and, and manually stack. But it does go ahead and like put these all into its own folder. So I thought this was interesting. This is something that we see on Nikon's higher-end bodies, but this is not something that's on the Z50. Another thing that I notice on this camera versus the Z50 is that when you go into your video record options, if you go down here, it actually does have a time code option. So this is also something that I didn't see on the Z50. So it kind of seems like they're kind of aiming this camera maybe at uh, a little bit more advanced photographers and uh, kind of content creators as well because we have these extra little uh, little options here. Okay, so something else I noticed on this camera that I've not seen, uh, actually I've not seen this on any other Nikon body, is an option in the custom settings menu here that allows us to use the exposure compensation even if we're in auto mode. Now, I went through a bunch of other Nikon bodies. I looked at the Z62, the D780, the D850. They might have that option somewhere in another menu. But uh, yeah, on those other Nikon bodies, 
I did not see any mention of this, and I've never seen this on a Nikon body before. As I think of it, it makes sense because we have a physical exposure comp dial. It's nice to be able to use that even in the automatic mode. So pretty cool. Some other things I noticed on this camera, it does also get uh, an option from the D780. I believe the D780 was actually the first Nikon uh, that gave us this option. But there's an option in here. I'm looking at my notes in my lap. I apologize for the little delay there. There isn't an option in here for extended shutter speeds. And so if you turn this on, <clears throat> basically this allows you to be in manual and you can actually use some longer, uh, you can actually use some longer uh, shutter speeds. Oh yes, and by the way, I didn't show you guys because I wasn't in auto. But yeah, you can see an automatic mode we can use that exposure comp setting because we have that option turned on in, in the custom functions. So yeah, pretty interesting. Going back over here to manual mode, you guys will notice uh, these shutter speeds I spoke of, uh, we've got it up in one third step right now. But now we can actually go down and do some longer uh, shutter speeds. So it's not going to just stop at, a, at uh, 30 seconds. It lets us do some longer times as well whenever we have that setting turned on. So this is also something that is not on the Z50, but it has been on other uh, recent Nikon cameras like the 780 and uh, I believe it's also on the Z6 too, but it's definitely on the 780. But anyways, we have this option as well. Looking at the ZFC, I can't help but think about another retro theme camera that Nikon has come out with in recent years. You guys remember this fellow. This, uh, if you guys have never seen it, this is the Nikon DF. And this is basically a retro themed DSLR. It's kind of a mashup between like uh, a D610 and like a, a D4. It got the sensor from the D4. So it was an interesting mix of cameras. I'm not going to go on and on about it. Go back and watch my video uh, about this camera if you guys are curious about it. But some of my thoughts about the ZFC kind of stem from this camera. This camera was a little bit more solidly built. Um, it does have a metal top plate, so it kind of felt a little bit more rugged um, compared to the ZFC. The ZFC definitely does feel a bit more, uh, just a bit more plasticky. But this is a camera that costs three times as much money as what the ZFC cost uh, whenever it was brand new. Uh, as a matter of fact, this camera. This camera used sells for just as much as what the ZFC sells for brand new. So it's not really a fair comparison. But of course, since Nikon made it as well, I can't help but think about it when thinking of the ZFC. Uh, maybe in the future, Nikon will give us a higher end full frame version of the ZFC. Who knows? I think that Nikon has actually added some useful features that's not that are not present on the Z50 that can be useful for very uh, for other types of photographers. So once again, if you're interested in that flip out screen, you want to do some vlogging, I think that can be good. And as we saw, there are some other features added to this body as well. So I think it makes a lot of sense. Nikon's marketing, as usual, makes almost no sense because they're just kind of marketing it more as a retro thing body. Had I not really dug in and looked at the feature differences, I wouldn't have known that there were all these other advantages to the camera. With that being said though, as always, Nikon's cameras are great. Their marketing, eh, well, you know. That's why I make my videos though, so you guys can see all the additional advantages of, this, advantages of these bodies. Uh, I'm going to keep playing with this camera some, but definitely write me in the comments below if you guys want to see additional things on this camera. I'm curious to know your thoughts. All of your thoughts end up being made into future videos, so I definitely appreciate the feedback. Follow me on social media. Uh, I am known as Photographer the Great. You can see more of my work on Instagram and on, and on Facebook. And definitely, definitely don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith. Signing off.